Welcome to a new episode of These Go to Eleven. Let's turn it up. Hey everybody, welcome back to These Go to Eleven, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. This not only helps us to get our content out there, but also helps us to find out what you, our faithful listeners, think. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to these Go to 11. Once again, I'm Nathan Bell. Joining me as always, Greg Dutcher. Greg, what's going on, man? I don't care if people are tired of hearing it, dude. It's February. <laughs> January's in the rear view, baby. It is. It is. It's a it's it's a week in the rear view at it this is. point. So. It is, and I am a happy man. I'm moving well, along. Dude. I will be happy if we get a good blowout storm. Me too. Like that's uh, you know, I, it's funny because I've always loved winter yep. and it's just one of my favorite seasons, but I realize that it's just, it's so different down here in Maryland. Yeah. Marylanders say they get four seasons. They really don't <laughs> yeah, like, I know, I know. you know, and, and Joy and I were talking about this. She was like, no, they do. They get four seasons. I said, yeah. Um, you know, hot as Hades. Yep. Um, they get, you know, basically like two days worth of a beautiful foliage. Yep. Uh, and then you get rainy from, you know, late November till about early May. Yeah, it sounds about right. And then you get about two weeks of uh, flowers coming out, and then you're back into uh, hot as Hades. So. Yeah, dude, you are right. We've got the heat and generally the cold down, but I like how you emphasized rain. Yeah. Dude, that's the mid-Atlantic, man. Yeah. And I always say, Lisa uh, says she likes winter, and I think in her mind... She envisions the winters of your childhood. Yes. Which she never had. Yeah. But she's seen enough shows. Right. Oh, in the cozy lodge with yeah. the, the snows, yeah. you know, blanketing everything and having a, a cup of hot chocolate, yeah. you know, by the fireplace. I was like, when do we have that? Right. Well, and there's something so different. I was talking about this with uh, a friend of mine recently who also grew up uh, up north or, or, or lived up north, didn't grow up up there, but lived up there. And um, there's just something different to even the days getting shorter because yeah. up there, again, if it's not if it's if it's cold, it's snowing. Right. Yeah. If there's precipitation, it's cold, it's snowing. And if it's not, you get these just clear, beautiful, crisp nights. Yeah. And again, up in New England, you've got very little light pollution going on. And so you can just see stars on end oh, and so there's man. just there's a beauty to it i mean if you grew up up there you probably know how to ski yeah. or snowboard so you know you're you do things that occupy your time in winter that just make you look forward to oh, it oh yeah yeah where down here you're right like you just you get this rain and it's like it sucks oh dude and i mean it and when um you know <clears throat> our listeners know if you've listened for any length of time i'm kind of an open book about depression and then you throw a little SAD in there, the yeah. seasonal affective stuff, which I, I believe in. I, for me, I just feel it's a uh, almost a fine-tuning of my depression. Wait a minute. It's almost like right. the engineers of SAD think, wait, guys, it's January. Right. Let's get to Dutcher. Right. <laughs> Tune them up a little bit. Add a little uh, you know misery into the mix. Um, so, yeah, it's tough, dude. I'm a very weather-affected person yeah and i i remember thinking you know at the end of january do you remember we had that two feels like a two-day deluge of rain yes Dude, yes. that would have been a, a major oh storm, yeah but yeah we that would have get the temperature up i know and then you'll have the day where it's 12 degrees and not uh, you know any precip anywhere in sight yep so yeah, I'm with you, dude. I always like the at least one big storm. Yeah. You know, shuts everything down. Um it just, you know, beautiful to look at. Yeah. Um, As it's coming down, it's great to see. And then once it lays, you know, you're you're out shoveling, you know, and clearing stuff out for like the first day. But then everything's still kind of shut down after yep. that. So you're going out and, you know, sledding or, you know, watching the kids sled and just enjoying enjoying the time. So. Oh, yeah. And we'll 
We've got a few more weeks, dude, to get one of those. Once you yeah. get into March, it tends to be like just a pile of wet slop. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, and if you if you remember, really, the the biggest ones that we've had have yeah. actually come in February. I think you're right. So. Yeah, I think you're right. I remember even when I was a kid in the late '70s, that was the first time I ever learned that snow could keep you out of school here. Yeah. Not in your neck of the woods, dude. No. Here for no. a solid week. Yes, we got rocked like on a Sunday night. One yep. of those big February storms. Yep. I want to say it was even post Valentine's Day. Yeah, and yep. it shut down everything for a week. Yeah, it was glorious. Yes, I don't know yes. why my mother was so unhappy during that time. <laughs> what, what do you think that was about, dude? Just, uh, you know, I, I can't and then everybody out. experienced that during <laughs> yeah. pandemic, right? Oh my goodness, man! <laughs> yeah, you know it was funny. The first week of the pandemic, I remember um, the Dutcher crew just you know we're playing Scrabble. Yeah. Lisa's, you know, hey, let me make a big breakfast this yeah. morning, and we're there. And it, it was, uh, I mean, we were interested. What's, yeah. you know, obviously what's happening. We, yep. you don't like hearing about uh, death tolls and hospitalizations mm-hmm. and stuff. But you're thinking, okay, this thing's going to be wrapped up probably mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. I don't know. That's what I thought. And then I don't know. By week two, three, mm-hmm. you're like, this is not the fun <laughs> blizzard right. moment that it felt like in the first few days. Um, so, yeah, we're moving on, dude. We are. We are moving on to other things. Like, we're mo- watch the transition, dude. Only professional podcasters can do this. That's right. Like, we're moving on today to our <laughs> new topic for the month we of February. We are. And uh, quick word about that, because we are, hopefully, as you all listened, uh, we were running our trailer for this uh, this topic that we are going to be discussing, yep. uh, the Holy Spirit. So it's no shock of what we're going to be talking about, because we've been promoting it all week. But... It's our hope that whenever we do a series like this, we're going to be releasing a trailer so you can kind of get a preview of what's coming up. Um, So February, you got one. March, you're not going to get one because we're actually taking a little bit of a break from the series. Yeah, yeah. And I think, dude, we we, we started the year with some pretty heavy stuff, right? I mean, we're talking about foundational truth yep. for the Christian. Justin, who we had on on the last cast, dude, I just love that guy. Yes. Eager to have him back. And, yes, uh, absolutely. Just get him to just sort of freewheel his way through another topic yeah. and uh, bring a, a depth of insight and just a down-to-earth uh, nature that he brings. Uh, but it was heavy. This is going to be, you know, hey, a pretty substantive yes. topic. And then in March... I don't want anybody to think they will be fluffy, but right. they will be, they'll have a different feel. Yes. Yes. And it might be a little fluff in there. Yeah, I, you know. I, I like a little fluff. That's right. Especially if it's marshmallow. That's right. But it'll it'll be good. It'll be good. So uh, obviously we are starting off, and uh, Greg, this series that we're doing, we're actually starting these first two as kind of a two-parter, part A, part B, talking about the nature of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I've got this Spurgeon quote here that I want to read. Uh, because I think it's going to fit really nicely into what we're going to be talking about. Um, And here it's, All the good that is ever done in the world is worked by the Holy Spirit, and as the Holy Spirit honors Jesus Christ, Mm. so Christ puts great honor upon the Holy Spirit. Um, And we're really going to be spending these next two talking about the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is, because you've said it before, Greg, I've said it before, the Holy Spirit is difficult to wrap our minds around. Sure is. Sure um, is. You know, I, I think you've put it, you know, it's kind of like the weird step uncle that you see yeah. every Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, you know he's part of the family. Right. You don't know what to do with him. Yeah. And, and so, you know, he shows up and he's there, but how do I, how do I, categorize you? How do I interact with you? And that's, I I feel like sometimes the Holy Spirit, and hopefully by the end of this, we will have given people a better understanding um, similar to God the Father and God the Son. We had Justin on last week. We talked about the creeds. We talked about the fact that the creeds all take time to acknowledge the three persons of God. But Many of the creeds uh, don't take a lot of time to devote to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And one of the things that I like that Justin pointed out is that regardless of where you are, and I think this speaks to the truth of Scripture, people have an understanding of God. Yes. Whether that understanding is true or not, there there is a concept of God and who He is. Um the thing that the creeds spend the most time talking about is God the Son, because yep. this idea of 
the sun coming down and being in human form, the God man, that's a little more tricky because yeah. is he fully God? Is he fully man? And and different creeds explore those different aspects of right. him because depending on where they were in history, they were struggling with those aspects. Of course, of course. And that's when you've got this elaborate vocabulary that's come down yes. to us, you know, and, and I think it uh, was dropped last week, the hypostatic union. Yes. That's not something I hear when I'm in line at Burger King, right? right? I mean, um, <laughs> you know, it's... Um, it, 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 you, you get into issues of substance and person, yes, distinction, but unity. Um, you know, you you obviously get into uh, monotheism. Yep. Uh, you have to by you know here, uh, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yes. Yet we unashamedly say there are three persons. Yep. Not three gods. So I think the issue demands. Uh, some really careful, critical thought, and yeah. we've been well served by spiritual ancestors mm-hmm. who uh, I think did remarkably well under the circumstances. But the Holy Spirit, yeah, <laughs> is is still one that I think there is much confusion over. Yeah, and at times you think, wait a minute, what is his role again? And I I wonder how many of our listeners have have found themselves, uh, and you know, this is not uh, to um, shame anyone. I hear it all the time, even mm-hmm. from people that have been walking with, with Christ for a long time, uh, referring to him as it. Yep. Right. Well, doesn't the Holy Spirit, is, isn't its role or isn't its job, yeah. you know, and you know, you, 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 you're careful. I don't jump every time and right. say, well, well, but when you have the opportunity to, you know, when we think it, mm-hmm. we don't think personhood, right. We're more likely going to think force, yep. inanimate object, a tool, yep. uh, so you know, just starting with his personhood is big. But the other thing, dude, just to forecast our roadmap here, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't want to spend too much time, and you won't let me, brother. Thank you. <laughs> you know, if I open up this can of worms, right, right, we're gonna have a worm souffle here. But I, um, you, you and I have both witnessed so much, dare I say, abuse. Yes. Yes. Of him, I do believe the Holy Spirit is blamed for a lot of things right. that he should not be credited yes. with at all. And I'll be totally honest; I can remember, um, you know, in in my youth when I've been in certain uh, church organizations or Christian organizations, I will oftentimes do that because yeah. I know what can stop someone in their tracks. Yes. Uh, from pursuing a line of conversation or a line of argument. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I can just say that I've been guilty of doing that as well. Sure. Um, and we are going to talk about that, though. That is going to be one yeah. of our, our topics, uh, not next week, but the week after. Yeah. The abuse of the Holy Spirit. Of course, of course, dude. And, you know, I think we've said, we've mentioned this on other casts too, but I um, I think this topic, getting the Holy Spirit right. Yes. Uh, I don't mean to presume we sit in judgment over him and we right. will look at him through the microscope, but really just understanding how he's revealed, yeah. what his role is, what what his job yes. jobs are, might be a better way to say it, yep. can prevent us from being a little too flippant. And I've told you, dude, when I'm having a conversation with somebody, and I had one in the fall mm-hmm. with uh, you know somebody who had a lot of passion over um, a a curriculum choice. Yep. Um, That's a substantive conversation. Let me hear thoughts, arguments, support. If somebody in such a conversation says, well, the Holy Spirit told me that this isn't good. Yeah. Like, where do you go from there? Right. You know, where do you go from there at that point? Like, well, I don't want to disagree with the Holy Spirit. Right. But if if we back it up a step and ask ourselves, what is the Holy Spirit's job? Right. What is his role? I mean, if the Holy Spirit's role was to confirm whether I should get um, an Italian cold cut or a <laughs> cheesesteak at the sub shop today, that would be pretty cool. Right. Go in, but, Holy Spirit, what should I get? But let's be real, Greg. If the Holy Spirit was working in that way, they'd yeah. probably tell you to get a salad. <laughs> I was going to say, what am I talking about? <laughs> Holy Spirit's like, you're going to box me into those two choices? Uh, <laughs> you can tell, dude, uh, that may have more about uh, to, more to do with my designs than yes. his. Yes. He would 
<laughs> say, why don't you go over to the organic place here, get something uh, good. I'm not sure he would tell me to eat tofu. We'll, we'll save that for another That's time. right. That's right. That'll um, go in another so, But, dude, I'm looking forward to kind of backing up and just revisiting what for some may be a learned um, set of ideas that they haven't thought about for a while. Yes. And for some might be new. Yeah. Uh, because who knows? Yeah. Uh, because, again, the Holy Spirit is is dragged into a lot of situations and conversations. Yeah. And I think it's good to step back and say, how is he revealed yes. in Scripture? And what are we to understand yes. about him? So. I think the, the, a good place to, to start that is actually in the beginning, going all the way back to Genesis uh, chapter 1. Yeah. We read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Yes. And I'm going to read verse 3, because I think this is where we get the full picture of the Trinity here. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And I think when you go and you take that and you read the book of John, yeah. and the first chapter of the book of John, there is no doubt that here we see all members of the Trinity present at once yeah. from the very beginning of creation. Yes, yes, I love that, Nathan. The, and whenever you see in the beginning, it's interesting that that John and Mark mm -hmm. both both use that term. You know, we're going through Mark's gospel yes. right now at, at church, um, and it's the beginning of the gospel. And our yes. day, that word for beginning is the first word. So I think it's meant to be a little bit jarring. It's meant to harken back to Genesis one one, which yep. you just read. Uh, and John, yes. Um, yeah, in the beginning was the, the word, word, and the word was with God. The word was yeah. God, and that, of course, is the 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 logos, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the second person of the Trinity yeah. who we know comes and dwells among us. He's Jesus. So, yeah, and I love, dude. What what I love about Genesis one is the picture is one of almost angst. Yeah, because you've got something that isn't formed yet. Yeah. But the spirit is there. Yep. Which is very interesting. When when you if you kind of go from Genesis one to places like deep into the New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, First Corinthians twelve, um, you know, which is about order in the church, yep. proper alignment of gifts, all about the Holy Spirit, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Yes. Um, <clears throat> except for the time out, Paul takes in 13 to write a wedding meditation. Right. Oh, wait, he may have been coming over this, but it's become a wedding meditation. Love is patient, love is kind, all that, which is, again, his appeal that the, the spiritual gifts not be abused. Yes. And this is what love looks like when, when, when doing that. But isn't it interesting? The Holy Spirit in the church is bringing order. Yes. Paul's concerned that things are disorderly. Right. And in the beginning of Genesis, you've got this chaotic picture uh, at least for the reader, like, oh, my word, things aren't formed, things aren't together. What, what right. is this? But the Spirit of God is there, which I think right. is signaling to us right. things are about to change. Right. And, I mean, we see that, you, you mentioned those passages, but Galatians, right? Galatians, yep. which is the most disordered church, that's yes. where we get the fruits of the Spirit yes. Good coming point. in. Yep. I mean, and so... You know, I love how you put that. Like the the spirit is there to to put things into order, which also means that the spirit is there to put us into order, into harmony with one another. Yes. Yes. And I think that's what we're going to be talking about in, you know, in a couple of weeks is the fact that a lot of times when people put things on the Holy Spirit, it creates disorder and not right. order. Right. And and we'll get there. Um, try not to jump the gun too no, early no, on that. Um, but but let's let's talk about um, Greg. Let's let's talk about the spirit in the Old Testament because yeah. I th I fear that many people will look at the spirit in the Old Testament and say, well, it works different in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Right. Part of that has to do with wh where we see, particularly with um, Saul, yeah, the spirit entering and leaving, leaving him. Sure. Um, and so let, let's address a little bit about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, yep. and then we'll move into the New Testament. Great question, dude. Uh, yes, there is definitely far more attention placed on him in the New. Mm -hmm. But as you rightly point out, he's mentioned at the very beginning. Yeah. And we see him in key places. Um, for a long time, dude, and I, 
I don't think you and I've talked about this, so let's at least formally on the podcast, maybe uh, individually. The the traditional view among many evangelical thinkers is that the Holy Spirit's role in the Old Testament was to empower um, the the Old Testament believers for specific tasks Mm -hmm. so that he might come upon someone temporarily and then remove. I, dude, am of the opinion that the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. I'm influenced by Dr. Robert Dunsweiler, one of Mm -hmm. my uh, theological professors at seminary, who's been with the Lord now since, oh my goodness, 1996. Okay. He died when I was there. He's a wonderful man. He uh, wrote one of his master's theses, uh, among many, on this idea, and I'll admit it's a constructed theological argument, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know where else to go except where his argument took me, and that is when I read the New Testament, I can't help but come away with that we can't obey God without the empowering uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When you read the the descriptions in the Psalms of what it means to love God, to love his word, mm-hmm. to love it, Psalm 119, right? Yeah. I rejoice, I delight in your precepts. Yes. Dr. Dunsweiler took this um, approach and said, can you think of a person who is not indwelled by the Holy Spirit that can do that? Mm. Yeah. And was there a time you could love the Word of God, the 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 heart of God, if His law represents His what He loves, you know what He hates? Yeah, uh, loving the law is aligning with God's heart. How can that be done without the Holy Spirit? So I will put my cards on the table early, yeah. Nathan. I, I didn't expect to get here this quickly, but it's good. I do believe that the Holy Spirit operated like he does in the new period, but I believe that it was not emphasized. Yep. It w- so that the New Testament opens up with a, a an attention to the Holy Spirit that now we can read back the Old Testament and make sense of. Yeah. So those passages where the Holy Spirit comes and goes, I believe are to communicate um uh, dramatic effects of yep. impact at different times, different places. Uh, the question of whether Saul was even a believer right. is a tricky one for me. Um, again, the, the categories weren't introduced like they were in the New Testament. Yeah, But I believe that, um, okay, here, here, here's one that I would say. What is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? What does it mean? Dr. Dunsweiler said, sometimes I think we, we get the impression we think of it spatially. Right. That the Holy Spirit is in me and think about him almost inside of me. And when I walk, he has to contour right. to my exact, <laughs> the boundaries form of my and, physical yeah. form. Yeah. And if I run, he's running exactly with me. If right. I stop, he's, because you wouldn't want him to spill out into the space I'm not. Right. <laughs> so he made the point that many Christians sometimes think the Holy Spirit uh, fills all space except the confines of the unbeliever's body. Yeah. I think he is there spatially. Right. But in the heart of an unbeliever, I believe that he is an uninvited guest. Sure. Or he's he's an intruder in a sense. Sure. So he helped me see that I think indwelling is better understood relationally than spatially. Mm. If God fills all space, if God doesn't fill all space, he's not omnipresent. Right. So if he fills all space, yeah. He's everywhere, but his relationship to a believer is is different. Dude, I I'm I'm going down a path. I'm sorry. No, that's I uh, think I, I think that's great because one of the things that I think um people struggle with when particularly um if if we talk about uh predestination and yeah. the sovereignty of God is the idea of well my my decisions and my choice don't matter, right? It, it, it gets reduced to a fatalism at right. times. The reality is what we're actually talking about is two wills, mm-hmm. your will and the will of God. Right. And so the question is, whose will is going to win out? Right. And there are times where God says, I'm going to allow your will to win out yeah. and 
there are times where God says, my will is going to win out. Right. Which ultimately, and, if you think about it, dude, is all his will. Right. Because he's, right, because he's that, allowing, that right. And if he gives us over to our sin, et cetera, right. that, that happens. And so the spirit then would be the, the manifestation of God's will acting in our lives to do the good right. that pleases him. And yeah. so, you know, it, in the case of Saul, it, it makes total sense that, yes, the spirit is there. Right. But there are times where, where God's will is saying, I'm going to allow your will to will out. But then there are times where... No, 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 my spirit, my will is going to win out, and you're going to do the good that I want you to do. Of course, dude, and, and you see that. I mean, this is God's sovereign decree to move um, the heart of an un, unbelieving mm -hmm. leader to do his will, yeah. right? We see that Cyrus of, of yes. Persia issues a decree for the Israelites to return from Babylon. Yeah. Why did he do that? No logical, historical, militaristical. No, no. But the heart of the king yeah. right, is is in the hand of the Lord. And yep. so I think when we see the Holy Spirit acting, we don't need to say, wait a minute, that's violating my theological box. He can do what he does. And right. this is key, dude, because he's God. Yes. So if you go back to Genesis 1, yeah. before I went on my long tangent, which might have been better for episode two, but hey, I started there. That's okay. Um, what I think should be established early is that the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. Right? We, yes. We, we should not miss that. You can really see that clearly in Acts chapter 5. Uh, and as I'm talking, I'll, I'll kind of turn there. But one of the things I love about Scripture uh, concerning the three persons, Father, yeah. Son, Holy Spirit, is there's so many times you can answer, which one does blank? Is it, you know, right. one, two, three? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Let's right. take the resurrection of Jesus. Yes. Um Dude, you find passages where, um, in Romans, God raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. Also in Romans, the Holy Spirit raises Jesus from the dead. And then you read in the Gospel of John, right. no man takes my life from right. me. I have the authority to lay it down and to take it back up again. Yeah. So you know, who raised Jesus? Was it Jesus? Or was it? Yes. Right. And only if, three, if these three persons are... God, yet there's one God, which yeah. is just still, every time I say it, mind-blowing. Um, can we really appreciate uh, that the Holy Spirit is is not an it? Yes. He is yes. a person with a will, with emotion. Uh, he can be grieved. I'm looking at the story in Acts chapter 5, dude, about Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. Um, the issue there in Acts 5 in the early church, people were sharing their wealth. Yep. Uh, they were experiencing genuine connection with one another, genuine fellowship, to use the, the fancy church term there. And um, they, um, you know, people are selling their property, etc. Ananias and Sapphira get the idea: Hey, it looks pretty cool when you do something radical like that. So they sell some property. Mm -hmm. They want people to think they gave every cent. Right. Which they weren't required to. Right. But they bring in their gift, um, and uh, it first starts with um, uh, it first starts with um, Ananias. Correct. Yeah. I'm looking at it here. Uh, Acts one sold a piece of property with his wife's knowledge. He kept back for himself some of the proceeds, brought only a part of it, laid it at the apostles' feet. So I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it starts uh, with Ananias. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? Mm -hmm. to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land. So it's clear what his violation is. He is lying in the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, I give all that I have. Right. And the Holy Spirit said, uh, no, you haven't. Right. And Peter's point is, the point isn't that you should have given all you had. Right. You should have been honest. Right. Instead of trying to get the praise of men. Um, and then it even says, while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? After it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you've contrived this deed in your heart, you have not lied to men, mm. but to God. Well, no, 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 Peter, you're wrong. It says it, it, two verses earlier, you forgot, you said he lied to the Holy Spirit. Right. So just the the natural sort of interchangeableness yes. of that, of those two terms yes. is very telling. Ephesians 4, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. 
Yes. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You yeah. can't grieve a hammer. Right. You can't grieve a buzzsaw. Right. Um, you can grieve a person. Yeah. Uh, so I think just to establish, okay, he's God. He, what God, what, what we think of God, which I think most of us, isn't it, Nathan? Our default is the Father. Right. Yes. When I hear somebody say God did, yeah. somewhere in the back of my theological categories, it, the, the, the Father is. Father is, is right. Foremost. And yeah. Uh, and he's the first person, right? Yep. So he often is mentioned first, etc. But what is said of him can be said of the other. Yes. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead. There are some things in their roles that, that one do. In other words, the Spirit does not send the Father to die on the cross. Right. Right? So I, yes. I do want to be clear on that. Yeah. Jesus dies on the cross. Yet all three are working together. Yes. Um, one more passage, dude. Hebrews nine, uh, and I believe it's fourteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I'm really setting myself off if, if I'm wrong here. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Uh, Hebrews um, thir- nine thirteen says, "For the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh." Taking an Old Testament cleansing ritual, how much more? Listen to how all three are mentioned here. Yeah. With a Blood of Christ, yeah, second person, who through the eternal Spirit, yeah, we're talking about third person, offered himself without blemish to God, yeah, obviously in reference to the Father, yeah, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So there, in the context of our salvation, yep, Father, Son, Holy Spirit working at His baptism, yes, the voice of the Father is yep. my Son, whom I'm well pleased, the Son Himself. Entering and emerging from the waters of the Jordan, yes. the Spirit descending upon him as a dove. Uh, it is an incredible um, picture yeah. of their interrelations and them working together. So I think yeah. he is God. Yes. And should be referred to as a person. Yeah. I always, uh, part of discipleship for me is I love to help that person, don't want to shame them. Just maybe it's our George Lucas blood in us, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we think of him as the, the force. force, right? <laughs> let's you know, it. It can't the Holy Spirit doesn't it right. help me? Doesn't it help me? And just to say, well, let's hey, let, let's get the first thing. Yeah, he's God. Yeah, he's a person. You wouldn't call the Father it, right? You're not going to call Jesus it, right? The Holy Spirit. And I think what we're going to get to uh, in, in our next episode that's going to be more helpful is the roles. Yes, right? Because again, these are. These are three distinct persons. Yes. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are three distinct persons. Scripture shows us that clearly. But as you mentioned, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. Hero yes. Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. And we do not serve three gods. We serve one God. Yeah. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna see that I think more clearly. But one of the things that I you love that you were alluding to was. Uh, the role, but but their relationship with one another, that they have taken on this unique relationship where there is glorification of one another, there's servitude among one another yeah. too, you yeah. know, and we've talked about this before. Um, the idea, you know, we've heard it many times. I, I think you said that you used to teach this yeah. to younger kids, you know, that God made you because oh. he was lonely, you know. Dude, um, I did. And the idea is, no, 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 God was far from lonely. Yep. You know, when Perfectly you consider fulfilled. when you consider the, the perfect relationship and fellowship and community that, that the Godhead had with one another, yep. and then you consider what he created and what we did. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, dude, I mean, can I say... I have often thought back on that time. Yeah. Matt Smith and I would laugh sometimes. Dude, we were like young Christians. Yeah. We were 17, yeah. 18, teaching 13, 14 year olds. I don't know who let us do that. Yeah. We probably had no <laughs> business doing that. I'm doing my best, but I think of God's kindness and oh, grace. Oh, yes. Because I was, I'll just, dude, think about it. Yeah. I was teaching, if you boil it down, God was lacking. Yeah. It was Jerry Maguire yeah. theology. Yeah. And you complete him. Yeah. Um, that's blasphemous. Right. I think I, I I don't try to bust out that term too much. It is a a horrible thing 
And God knew yes. I was young yes. and stupid, yeah. sincere, and by his grace, dude, I was right. not struck dead. Yes. <laughs> I had people come into my life and teach me, hey, yeah. Greg, that's wrong. Yeah. And uh, truth matters. Yes. And God was completely, um, completely fulfilled. Yes. So I love one of Tim Keller's references, I think, that comes out in several of his books. Uh, he refers to it as the eternal dance. Yes. Because uh, a dance, there is, uh, if you think of a, 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 the perfect dance scene yep. in a movie, right? There's joy. Yes. There's spontaneity. But yep. there's coordinated yes. moves. There is a, they're there's, in sync. They're in, in sync, rhythm. Rhythm. Yes. And, and there's something spectacular happening yes. that's breathtaking for other watchers. I love that analogy. And again, as we've seen, there is no perfect analogy right, yeah. for the Trinity. I want yeah. and there never will be. <laughs> right. No, the sun, yes. the sunlight, the the heat of right. the sunlight, it doesn't He's work. like a computer, the monitor yeah. and the keyboard <laughs> and the the CPU. Yes, he's the egg and there's the shell and the whatever the goop stuff is and the yolk, yolk's on you. Uh, you know, there's no analogy. Yeah. Uh, so we 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 established that from the beginning. Uh, if we could make sense of it, it's our invention, not his. Yes. So we simply say, with our pea brains, we do the best. The dance kind of speaks to that that beautiful fulfillment. Yes. And, dude, I've often wondered, what was it like for the Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father, a trillion years ago? Yeah. I know this, dude. They weren't deficient. Right. They weren't lonely. Right. Uh, what bored. conversations were oh. they having? What you know, what joy yes. and love were within one another that they had for one another, yes. you know, and we, we get glimpses of that in scripture, right? Where, you know, it talks about the father delighting in the son and everything the yes. son does brings honor and glory to the father. You know, yeah. it, all that I do pleases the father. And dude, what is it at the beginning in, in Genesis one, the, the, the millennia, beyond yeah. however you you can quantify timeless time right when they when they create yes the joy yes he almost almost yes goes, here we go well and to me that's the biggest thing when, when whenever we talk about the you know the creation right and what was it was it six literal days or was it you know millions of years that's not the point the Never. point is imagine the joy in creation yes i can picture God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, breathing everything into existence in six literal days. I, I can picture that. Of course. He's powerful enough to do that. But I can also picture God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creating a daisy. Right. Check this out. Right. Watch yeah. what I watch watch this. Yeah. And then and then oh, watch this. There's another one. Yeah. Watch there's another like one ladybug. Yeah. Right. You know, you know I like mean, and the intricacy. Like why why do we have such a difficult time when when we create, we have that joy course, and delight in course. our creation. So yeah. why can't we imagine that the person who we are made after yeah. <laughs> has that same joy and delight in yeah. his creation? Dude, great point. Great point. And and I do think that's the to think of the Holy Spirit, because you know, I love how you started this, dude, of the uh, reminding me of the uh, the weird uncle analogy. Yeah. We don't know what to do with, <laughs> and sometimes dude, just to start in Genesis one and realize that He is there. Yes, and He's going to bring order, joy, yep, uh, beauty, uh, as the Father and the Son will, because. Let's be honest, Lou. We can give the attribution of creation to the fathers, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, you know, Colossians one says, yes. you know that uh, you know, all things were made, uh, uh, you know, uh, through Him and for Him. Yes. Uh, but He's creating, right? We and see without Him, universe. nothing was made. Nothing was made, and you know, you've just got this beautiful interplay. Yeah. And I think that is a great place uh, to start. And I'm glad, dude. Watch this. Whether you leave us in. A, I'm glad we took out my little earlier tangent out in post because <laughs> uh, we'll get to that at an, uh, another time. Yeah. I think starting today, uh, and how are we doing time wise, dude? On we're this, good, good on this cast that the Holy Spirit is God; He is a person. So uh, I will say, dude, I'll throw this out here, and that's kind of an application point. 
I don't have an issue when people pray to the Holy Spirit. A lot of people rule each other yeah. on, uh, well, no, you, you only pray to the Father in Jesus' name, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. I don't think Scripture boxes that in. Yeah. Uh, I will be the first to admit I can't think of a prayer that is directly attributed to the, or directed towards the Holy Spirit. Right. But if he is God, right. it is not something we're doing Right. We're not praying to Abraham. Right. We're not praying to a man or a woman right. uh, who can't help us. We're right. praying to God. So all the attributes we think of, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, yes. all the omnis, you know, the 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 big ones. Yep. Kindness, mercy. It's not that the Father is kind and merciful and the Holy Spirit is unkind right. and unmerciful. Right. right. There is no, um, there is no cognitive dissonance right. within the Trinity, and I think just starting there, landing on that truth, it is a great joy. Yeah, yeah, and you, you see, you know, you talk about that idea of, you know, how do we think about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit within yeah. our prayer life, within our active uh, living. One of the things that we do know for sure is that uh, the Spirit internalizes our prayers and brings them before the Father. Yes. And so, like you said, you know, if, if people are thinking about it and praying to the Holy Spirit um, or praying to Jesus the Son or praying to God the Father, they're all God. Yes. Right? And, and regardless of how sloppy our thinking or wording is, as a believer, the Holy Spirit is cleaning that up for us and bringing it before Always. the Father. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, dude, because I know we'll, we'll get into uh, his roles a little more on the next cast, but um, the, the the liberating effect of what you just said, yeah, that w when a lot of times people say, I don't know how to pray, I said, you know, Jesus actually said we don't know how to pray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't say that to like, well, you're brand new. Don't trust me in, in a week. And you and I have had this, dude. Yeah. I, sometimes when you're around people that might not be Christians or they, they may not have ever prayed as a regular part and you pray, I get the, that was beautiful. Yeah. I could never pray like that. And I love to remind people, you know, I don't know how to pray. Right. I, I, you've heard me say some words. The, the fact that the, the Holy Spirit is so eager, gracious, ready to take our slop, yes. even when we think it sounds good, because right. we use words like beseech and right. behoove. <laughs> right. I beseech thee uh, right. to behoove my beehive or whatever. <laughs> um, like he he just, I, I picture it. Can I tell you how I picture it? Mm -hmm. I picture it sometimes. Father, he's clueless. Yeah. Let me tell you what, what he, right. he can't say. Right. And him interpreting that yes. for us. Yeah. As it rises before His presence, it's incredible. Well, it's like the sins the 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 Son has died for, right? We we don't know all of our oh. sins that Christ has died for. Yeah. We we couldn't possibly comprehend yep. all of that. Yeah. You know how yeah. how often I sin in a second, forget oh. a minute, you know, or dude, an hour. I've, I've actually written them down this morning. I'm, <laughs> I'm building quite a list on you, dude. Trust me, it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I, no. I bet I got more than you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, more than all of us do. But, but you know, if the Son can die for that and the Father can forgive that, then yeah. of course the Holy Spirit can take what's going on inside of, of us, course. the groans of our heart, yeah. right? Those times where the, the we're in such desperation yeah. that we, we have no words, and yeah. the Spirit can take those and turn them into words to bring to the Father. Dude. Your 2018, um, uh, somebody encouraged me when I was really crashing and burning. Sit, just sit in his presence, Greg. Mm -hmm. If you can't formulate a thought. And I believe the best I could do at a point was, honestly, mm -hmm. it, it, if you could put it in like a, a screenplay, yeah. it would say, Greg, colon, bruh. Yeah. I mean, that, that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe I was giving that to the Lord. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. The person, yes, who, it, who loves me, yes, who advocates for me, yes, takes that and turns it into something beautiful. And dude, is what an incentive, yeah, to to pray when we do. Now, yeah, sometimes we know, right? There's somebody we love. They're yeah. going through a significant trial. Yeah, 
Lord, we demand nothing. We don't name it and claim it. We don't right. blab it and grab it. We'll get to that soon, too. <laughs> we simply say this is our desire. Yes. Of course I don't want my, my friend to get divorced. Of right. course I don't want their child to die of leukemia. Right. And we tell him those things. Right. And we pour out, and it's focused, and it's clear, and it's right. passionate. And that's awesome right. that we have that access. And then, But even then... The Holy right. Spirit is praying things right. for us that we probably don't even know. And isn't that also, isn't the Holy Spirit working in us as well to bring those things out, to focus our minds? Because I know, I mean, you and I, you and I talk about this all the time, Greg, you're ADD. I don't know if you know this about me, but I was tested ADD, ADHD. Like I, my focus during prayer is off the wall. Yeah. And so the fact that the Spirit will even focus my mind in those moments to be able to pray for someone like oh, that. Yeah. Like, I mean, the spirit is doing that. I know it's the spirit doing that because I, in, in and of myself, I can't. It's incredible. I, um, a sweet lady in our church recently said to me, I don't know if she listens to the, the podcast or not, but if you do, you know who I'm talking about. She came up to me after church when I referenced my ADHD and gave me a better definition. Did I tell you that? No. She said, Greg, just to know, you know, ADHD, attention deficit hey donuts <laughs> and i thought oh my soul that is my new favorite that's amazing acrostic uh it was acrostic <laughs> or abbreviation whatever it is uh for adhd that's so, amazing uh, well and we get down to it you know this goes back to this uh, be still and know that i am god yeah. right you know that that particularly in our American culture, right? How many things do we go to, you know, the binge watching, you know, just the one episode right yep. after another. And, noise, noise, noise. You know, there's the value in the being still and and waiting on God. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, that, that sometimes we miss and lack yes. um, in our lives. And dude, think of Genesis 1 again, the primordial picture, to yeah. use a fancy word, right? This... This unformed, it, it chaos. basically is chaos, yeah. right? But the Holy Spirit is there, which should tell us this chaos is going to become cosmos, right? right? Which is you know world, or, or but it's an ordered Order. world. Yes. And uh, I heard a guy years ago say, you know, this is probably a delicate subject today. You don't want to be too uh, patriarchal about it, but he was addressing the women. He goes, ladies, you know this. You know what cosmos is because... In the morning, you wake up, you turn on the bathroom light, you see chaos, right? <laughs> and you get cosmetics, right, to apply, what, to bring order out of chaos. <laughs> um, yeah, that might come out in post. I right. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I, just an analogy I heard years right, ago. Right, I thought, right, okay, I never knew cosmetics. Yeah, it makes sense. Related to cosmos. Right. Order. But the Holy Spirit does that because right. he loves beauty. He loves. He is God. He is God, yeah. He will work towards that end. That's great. All right. Well, this was part one. So oh, we're uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off now, Greg, until the next time. I won't say it because this is only part one. So we'll wait till the next time. There'll be some rocking coming soon. That's right. All right. We'll catch you all later. Thank you again for listening to These Go to 11, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Once again, please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you ever find yourself in the Forest Hill, Maryland area, please feel free to stop by at 135 Industry Lane, and you can get all of our service times and information at ChristFC.org. These go to 11.